Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I am going to go over how to make a concrete candle from start to finish. So supplies you're going to need, how to make the container, and how to pour the wax into the container. I'm gonna go over tips and tricks I have found that have helped me, and I hope this video is helpful to all of you. Now, if you're new to my channel, my name is Kayla. I make videos all about concrete and candles. So if you are a fellow business owner or a crafter like myself, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the videos I post in the future. Now I do have a video on my channel, um, that's the DIY Valentine's Day um, concrete candle. It got very popular, a lot of people were watching it just to see how to make a concrete candle. So I thought, why not go ahead and make an updated one with updated tips for all of you. And here it is, let's jump into it. All right, so these are the supplies that you're going to need. I'll put all the links in the description box below for all of you. So first you're gonna want some concrete. I use Cementol, and you can get the 25 pound box or the 50 pound bag. And I use red Solo cups to stir my concrete, but I've also seen metal bowls and plastic bowls used as well. And then you're also going to need molds. So these two molds I got off Amazon, and the links are in the description box. This is a silicone cylinder mold, and then I have an oval silicone mold inside of a plastic base that kind of just helps hold the structure while the concrete dries. And then you're going to want color. So we're doing two different colors today. I wanted to show you two different techniques. So the first color we're going to be using is acrylic paint, just normal matte finish. You don't want satin, you want matte. This is a turquoise color. And then, then we're going to be using a concrete pigment from Direct Colors. And this has a little bit different of a texture, so that way you can see two different techniques. Now you're also going to want some water. I just put it in this jug just to make it a little easier to pour. And then you're going to want some kind of gloves. These are just some rubber gloves and they seem to work perfect for this. And then you're also going to want some stirring sticks. Um, I got these at Home Depot in the paint section. All right, so as far as sealing and sanding the containers, this is what I use. So for the sanding blocks, I'll use a variety of different grits. So I'll have 60, 80, 120, just depends on the roughness of the container. And then for the sealer, there has been a lot of conversation of what sealer has is best for your container. I personally use polycrylic. It is a personal preference. It's completely up to you. I have tested it with heat and seeping into the candle and I have not had any issues at all and neither have any of my customers. So that is what I personally use. Now to apply the sealer, you're going to want some kind of sponge brush. I have found this to be the perfect thing to use while applying to the container. All right, so the first container we're gonna start with is the cylinder mold using the blue concrete dye from Direct Colors. So when pouring the water, I actually use drinking water just as a side tip, I don't use tap water. I have found that there's less bubbles when pouring the concrete um, after it dries for some reason. So when doing this, the ratio I currently use is three to one. You can use a four to one ratio. Um, it's kind of like right in the middle between three and four, if I'm honest. So I usually base it on the consistency. So I'll start with three to one. And as you can see, it's a little bit runny, but not too runny. There's still some thickness in there. You don't want it watery. Now when you're adding this direct colors pigment, this blue is very, very sensitive. So don't add a lot, add a little bit at a time and it will do wonders. Now you want to make sure that you stir this really well so that way the color really mixes into the concrete before you pour into the mold. Now when you pour, you're going to want to make sure you tap the sides periodically so that way it goes to the bottom of the mold and that does reduce the air bubbles once you're done pouring. All 
All right, so I poured a little bit over the top. Um, you can't really see it from this angle, but you can use this little tool here, just a little paint scraper, and you can just scrape the top right off and it'll make it nice and even for you. And then after you're done with that, just be sure to tap the sides and really get all those air bubbles out. So I do have a little bit of concrete left and sometimes I pour them into my little molds just so I can have something a little extra uh, for myself um, or you know something fun to sell on my site. So I'm just gonna pour you know, the rest of the concrete in here and then hopefully I'll have a little bit more from the next mold and I can pour it on top. All right, so the next container we're gonna do is the oval. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and again, do our three to one ratio. I am using two cups for this one just because I can't fit enough in one cup. So I have found that using two cups is the best for the way that I pour my containers. So once I have both of those done, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in a little bit more. I did notice that I didn't have enough in each cup. I have figured out that about three quarters of a red solo cup, two of them, fills up this oval container. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the color here. Now when you're using this acrylic paint, you are gonna use a little bit more than the dye, than the concrete dye. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to shake it first, and then go ahead and do a little bit at a time because you can always add more. All right, so make sure when you're stirring this, you are stirring a few minutes so the color binds with the concrete. And then make sure that if it does get a little too tough to stir, you can add some water to help with that. All right, so we're ready to pour. So with this mold, I found that I can tap on the middle of the mold and it helps bring all the concrete to the bottom. And um, so you can use that little trick. And then again, I just drop and make sure I tap the sides of the mold so that way all the bubbles come out. Ahead and let these set for about two to three hours and then we will unmold them all right so we waited and we are ready to unmold so we're gonna go ahead and take the oval out first now when you're doing this the oval is gonna come off really easy um, just make sure that you're gentle with the mold itself so here's the turquoise acrylic color and then this is the second one, we have our cylinder. So with this mold, um, you can peel the sides back first and then I kind of just roll it down with my hands and then just pull it over the lip. Um, and that usually helps it come off pretty easy. Now we have our blue concrete dye cylinder. All right, now for this little one that we poured, I just wanted to unmold it and show all of you how it came out. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and sand and seal the containers. I pour my polycrylic in this jug, just like my water, and then I pour it into the cup. 
Now I use my sponge brush to seal the container, but first we're gonna go ahead and sand the containers first. And again, I do use a variety. These are 60 grit that I am using right now. All right, so we're gonna sand all the bottom and then we'll go ahead and seal the container. So I start with the middle um, and I will do one layer in the middle and we will repeat for a second layer. I do two layers in the inside of the container. And then we'll go ahead and do the outside while the inside first layer is drying. And then we'll just do the top part. And when you're doing this, just go around the top and make sure there's no little pieces or bubbles of the sealer that may have came up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the second coat on the inside of the container. And then I will do the bottom last. All right, same thing with the cylinder. We're going to go ahead and take off the bottom pieces and sand it. And then we're gonna go ahead and seal. So I'll start with the middle and do my first layer. This one's a little bit hard to see. And then I'll go ahead and do the outside. And then I'll do the top portion of it. And then again, checking any of the sides to make sure everything looks good and clean. And then I'll go ahead and do, I did the bottom on this one and then I went and did the second coat on the inside. So I let my container sit about 12 to 24 hours before pouring wax inside and that just allows it to dry. All right, so these are the supplies that you're going to need to make the actual candle. So you're going to want wax. Um, this is a Presto pot that I use and I put my wax in there. There's already wax inside, um, but I use the Golden Wax 464. You can get this from Candle Science or Amazon. Now this Presto pot, I love it because it does have this spout um, that it's really easy to pour the wax out into your pitcher. Now you're gonna want your containers, so this is how they turned out. So this is the acrylic paint turquoise oval and then the blue concrete dye cylinder. Now these are the wicks that we're going to use. So for the oval, I use these and this is the CD3 six inch. Now, and then for the cylinder, I use these wicks and it is the CD12. I have used CD10 on these as well and it works fine. Um, now for the wicks, these are pre-tabbed um, and as you notice, these are not pre-tabbed because I cut these and I save the extras and then I tab them myself. Um, so I just bought these extra tabs and I just tab them. I will show you in the video how I do this and it does save a lot of wicks. Um, you're going to want these needle nose pliers to squeeze the tabs and the wicks together. And again, I'll show you that in a minute. Now you're going to want wick stickers to put at the bottom of the containers. And then you're going to want your fragrance oil. I usually get my fragrance oil from Candle Science. This is Oak Moss and Amber, which is a very popular fragrance of mine. Now you're also going to want a pitcher or something to pour your wax in. Um, this is awesome to use. Uh, you can use a larger one or smaller. Now this is a thermometer. You can use a digital or just a regular thermometer. I have both of them in the description box below. I use popsicle sticks to center my wicks. Um, they're very easy to use. You can use them over and over again and they're super cheap to buy. And then a kitchen scale for measuring your wax and fragrance oil. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so we have the wax 
melting in our Presto pot. So I just want to tell you a little bit about this Presto pot. So this has a spout where the wax comes out and it's really easy. You can tilt it if the wax is at the very bottom. Um, but one tip I can tell you about the, the little temperature nozzle, keep it on warm and that won't get your wax too hot. Um, if you start messing with that temperature nozzle, it can heat up quite a bit. So we do need to wait a little bit for our wax to melt. So we'll do the wicks now. So for the wicks, I'm gonna show you how I do the oval first. So again, these are the CD3 from Candle Science and these are just extras that I had cut off a previous candle. I mean, I just didn't wanna throw them away and waste them. So I take three of them because I use three wicks in this oval candle. And then you're just gonna grab three of these little tabs and I'll have this in the description box below too so you know where to buy them. So all you're going to do is you're going to take your wick and then I put my finger kind of at the back to hold it. You're gonna stick it through. And then you're gonna take your needle nose pliers and just squeeze it together as tight as you can. And now you have a, a pre-tabbed wick. It's perfect. And then I go ahead and put the sticker on the back. And we are set. So I'll do those to the other two really quick. All right, so now that we have all three of them done, we're gonna go ahead and place them in. So I place them one in the center and then two to the sides, and that helps me really get them centered and looking nice. So we're just gonna peel the sticker off the back. So we're gonna center this one right in the middle first and push down on it. And then the other two we're going to center to the right and the left as if there was another circle to the right and another circle to the left. All right, so there's the oval. Now we're gonna do the cylinder. So for the cylinder, I just use one wick and I use the CD12. Again, I have used CD10 and that works as well. Um, just make sure you test out your wicks. So this one is pre-tabbed, so we don't have to worry about putting the tab on there, just the wick sticker, and then just center it as best as you can. Now, if it's not centered, it's okay. Just don't push down. Um, just you can pull it back up and then recenter it and then push down when you're ready. Okay, so we are ready to pour our wax into our pitcher. So I'm gonna put some math up on the screen for you so that way you know how to do this. So for my candles, I have a 12 ounce candle and a nine ounce candle. So a total of 21 ounces. Now I don't wanna do a total of 21 ounces of wax, I wanna include my fragrance oil. So I do 10% fragrance oil, so I'm gonna have 2.1 ounces of fragrance oil, so I need to subtract that from the 21 ounces. So I'm gonna have 18.9 ounces of wax that I need, and then I'm gonna add 2.1 ounces of fragrance to give me a total of 21 ounces. 
So I'll have that on the screen for you so you can pause it and write that down if you need to know how to do that. So just make sure you zero out your scale when you put your picture on there. And then we're going to go ahead and pour the wax. I do have a paper towel on my floor so that way the wax doesn't drip off. Um, so you're going to just pull the spout. Now I do have the wax pretty low in my Presto pot right now. So you just tilt it a little bit and it will come out faster for you. One of the things I love about this Presto Pot is if you have poured too much wax in your pitcher, you can pour it right back in. All right, now once we have our 18.9 ounces of wax, we're gonna let it set and cool to about 160 before we pour the fragrance oil. All right, so it is about 160, so we're gonna go ahead and pour the fragrance oil. So when pouring it, you wanna just pour it slowly, that way you don't pour too much. Now, you wanna add your fragrance oil when the wax isn't too hot, so it doesn't burn off, and also not when it's too cold, because then the fragrance oil won't bind with the wax. So once you get all that poured in there, I usually just take a spoon and I stir it around for a couple minutes to make sure it all binds together. Once you're done stirring, you wanna let it set till about 135 and then go ahead and pour into your containers. So we are set at 135, so you're gonna wanna pour very slow. This is sped up. Uh, make sure you pour slower and then you don't have any bubbles at the top of your candle. Now when you're done pouring, you're gonna wanna make sure you center your wicks and this is where the popsicle sticks come in handy. I'm just gonna put them on there and center the wicks so they are in the right spot when the candle dries. All right, so sometimes you're going to experience not so smooth tops and I am kind of glad that this happened so that way I can show all of you what I do to help with this. So this happens sometimes if you pour your wax too quickly or you know it's just the fragrance oil. Sometimes fragrance oils with certain um, you know vanilla will make this happen to the top of the candles. So get this heating gun for yourself. It is a lifesaver. I use this all the time. And um, so you're just gonna plug it in and go on the, the lowest setting. Don't do the highest setting or it's gonna really melt your wax and possibly ruin your wick. So lowest setting and just go over the tops. All right, so you're gonna do this for a few minutes. Just be sure not to get too close to your wick. Um, otherwise you can burn the wick. All right, so they have set for about 20 minutes. So as you can see, they are nice and smooth now. So they don't have that rigid look on top. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the wicks. Uh, you're gonna want one of these wick cutters. You can also use just regular scissors. I used regular scissors for the longest time, um, but this is a lot easier of a cut and a clean cut on the wick. So you're gonna wanna cut it about a quarter of an inch.
and there you have it. We have our acrylic paint turquoise oval candle and our blue concrete dye cylinder candle. All right, so that was my video on how to make a concrete candle from start to finish. If you feel like I missed anything or you have any questions, please post them in the comment box below and I will get back to you. As I said during the video, I have posted all the materials in the description box below. So there are links there for you if you wanted to see what I use and what you're going to need. Thanks again for watching and if this was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.